The pattern that I'm demoing today belongs to my friend Mary Johnson and she's given me special permission to teach it to you. It's really great to use for novelty prints. It's wonderful if you're making charity quilts or even maybe you found out you need a baby quilt and you need, you need it fast. This is a really cute quilt for that. This pattern is free. We put the link to get your free pattern from Mary in the description below. So just go below and print it on cardstock like I did. For our second fabric we're going to cut out, we need six. So we're gonna cut this red and it's so crooked on the end that I'm going to cut a strip to put in my strip box to get me started. I just don't wanna waste all that fabric. Now I'm cutting, I need six strips of this and the sizes are in your free pattern when you get it. Here I go to cut the last three. So making these kits is really fast. In fact, at the end of every year, I cut a bunch of these kits. I've cut up to 60 before. And then I've just sewn them all up and used them for groups that I'm in throughout the year. They, they make wonderful quilts to donate to hospitals or to Project Linus or to wherever you like to donate. On this third color, we need 10. So we're cutting 10 strips. And as soon as I finish cutting these strips, you're going to watch me fold the fabrics. The way I fold it in just a moment is how I fold it for my kits and then I put it in my drawer. And whenever I have a sewing moment, it's ready to sew. The novelty print we're sewing with today, it's tractors and it's directional. There's a top and there's a bottom. It's important if you're going to sew a bunch of these to get in a habit. My habit is to always sew the first strip to the bottom. So you can see because it's directional, I'm sewing the yellow strip to the bottom and I'm going to sew all the bottom yellow strips on first. I chain sew them. I'm coming to the end. Here I go. I'm just going to sew them all to the bottom until I'm done. And now I've turned it around and I'm sewing them to the top, getting all the yellow sewn to the novelty print. You stop and you press it and you press it as you go because you can wait till you're done but it, it's harder to press so if you press it as you go it lays flatter it stays better I just press them and throw them over the corner of my big board ironing board and as they stack up and get ready I leave them so they're directional so see how I'm making sure to put the top and the bottom consistently on each other so that I don't get anything turned around. Nothing's more frustrating than getting a quilt done and having one of the tractor sets be upside down. So don't do that. Pay attention the whole way through if you're sewing something that's directional. This next part is where people often will goof. To stop from goofing, make sure to only sew the red strips at the bottom of the direction. So you see me lining them up, making sure the tractors are right side up, and then I'm putting the red strip at the bottom. If you do that, you won't have any trouble with the pattern. Sew them all to the bottom. So, 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 here we go. If you decide to make one of these quilts, it's going to amaze you how speedy and fast it goes. It's just so fun and so fast. So when I press, this part. I press it a little differently than before. I press it open, of course, that's the same. But what I do is because they take up so much room, I layer them on top of each other. As long as you're pressing and you're not right on top of one of the other seams, it works really well. So I press the red part open and down and you'll notice as I'm pressing that I remind the yellow at the top where it's supposed to be, tell it to behave and press it I just like to make it all flat and happy. So that's what I'm doing. I get all five of them pressed on. And then we have this guy. We have that one extra strip. We sew it to the top. And as soon as I get it done, this one has to go in timeout. We take the other four and we start lining them up to sew together. We're almost done. We're on the downhill slide, but keep your guy in timeout or sometimes you can goof and you'll just be mad at yourself. He's in a good timeout. He's watching a movie over there, I'm pretty sure. So sew these sets together, press them, press them open. You're getting used to this whole pressing rig rigmarole. So we're gonna press both of these and here we are sewing them together. This is our second to last seam. As soon as this is done, we can go get our friend from timeout and he can go in his right spot to finish off this quilt. 
pressing it, getting it ready, and timeout guy, here you come. We put him on the very top because that's what finishes off the quilt. Make sure your tractors are the right direction. Yep, they are because you sewed it properly, but this guy could get turned upside down, so don't let him. Here it is. It's done. Now there's some tricky stuff to finish this quilt off, so don't stop watching because we want to get those sides trimmed. First, I like to clean up the quilt if it has any spare threads. Let's clean it up just a little. And then I take it and I fold it. And I don't fold it exactly in half because I'm trying to stagger my seams. But I check it, I fold it, I make sure it looks great. I keep it straight the best you can. You want this to be really laying straight on your board. And then you set the one side you check if the lines are straight by looking at the lines on your ruler and you just fix it the best you can. You can see the side is crooked. It will be. You want to set it straight to the lines you've sewn. You trim it off. There it is. You check and make sure you got all the salvages. Ooh, masterful. We did it. And then you very carefully, without moving it or messing it up, you flip it around so that you can get the other side ready to trim. And then you do it again. You line up your lines with the straight lines of the ruler. You check two or three places along there and make sure it looks good. And as soon as it does, then you hold it and you very carefully trim with your cutter. And this is four layers, so you have to have a good blade and a good cutter. Off it comes, and now the magic happens because we get to go see. There it is, beautiful, beautiful tractors. There are a lot of patterns out there for strippy quilts with different sizes of strips and I make multiple kinds and multiple variations of this pattern but I always get this pattern out because this pattern is just really balanced and if I want to make a whole bunch at once this is the pattern I use. Do you have some fun fabric in your stash to make a strippy quilt? Go make it! Stay merry and creative!